Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is AfterTouch Audio. This video will be the first video in a multi-part series breaking down my sound design process for creating magical sound effects. Before we get started, here's a quick list of every video that will be included within the series. I have a lot of really cool surprises planned throughout the series, so if you're liking the series, consider hitting the like and subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified when the next video goes live, ring the bell. So in this video, we're going to be going over magical textures. What are magical textures, you might ask? Magical textures are added as a supporting layer to any type of spell. They act as the twinkle, sparkly, noisy layer that you hear in a lot of RPG sound design. Now, magical textures don't just need to be supporting elements piled on top of your element spells. These textures can actually be created and combined to create standalone spell effects. These textures can be extremely powerful layering elements to have within your sound effects library, as adding just a few of these elements to any type of sound can make just about any type of elemental spell fit within an RPG game. Now, the category of magical textures is just about as wide as the Amazon River, and you can really get as creative as you would like with these textures. Some of the more common effects you'll find are things like shimmers, whooshes, downers, healing, just kidding, risers, lasers, etc. So, what do we need to get started? Well, to get the ball rolling, We'll need some source material. When I'm out recording things like cars, I tend to have a very sniper-like approach to sampling. I tend to go in with a sample target and come back with the exact result I'm looking for. But when I'm out recording things like source material for magic spells, I really like to take a shotgun approach, grabbing anything and everything that I think, well, you know, can be magical. In my experience, some of the best samples that I've recorded have been through exploring and just having fun, not through a planned recording session. But with that being said, here are a list of some of my go-to sound sources that I've used to create magical textures. White, brown, or pink noise. Rain sticks. Glass shards. Different sized bells. Wind chimes. Bowed symbols with objects placed on the symbols. This thing. Guitar string whooshes. Different textures of whooshes. Arrow flybys with different objects attached to the arrows. Musical instruments like flutes, harps, pianos, marimbas, toys, ethnic instruments. Really anything musical will work. Obsidian needles. Weapon slides and scrapes. And synthetic textures. More on this in a bit. I highly encourage grabbing your microphone and just exploring the objects that you have around you. You'd be very surprised how much mileage you can get by just recording some objects, you know, found around your home. Quick tip though, if you go to your local music shops, some of them will have a quiet place where you can go and practice some different instruments. This is a really great little spot to capture some musical sounds for free, and most synths at these shops have an output that you can plug a recorder directly into. But you didn't hear that from me. Now, you don't need to be a master at playing musical instruments. As a matter of fact, actually, the worse you are at these instruments, the cooler the sounds you can get. With that being said, if you want to pick up a chance card and skip right past to go, I have left some of my favorite magic-related sample libraries in the description below that will get you up and running right away. Okay, now that we have some source material, let's talk about processing. When it comes to processing, though, all gloves are off. Magic sounds are not something that we encounter here in the real world, so as a sound designer, we have complete and total creative freedom to take the sounds that we have in our heads and bring them into reality. Now, there are some tried and true effects that will get you results really quickly, so I'll give you a list of some of my favorite ones here right now. Reversing. When we reverse samples, we can easily create whooshes, risers, and dreamy textures like reverse bells, pianos, and wine glasses. When you reverse these samples though, make sure you fade out the end of the transient sample so you don't get that sucking effect. Frequency shifters. Now this might be a plugin that you have picked up, fiddled with for a little bit, and then said, this is weird, and just have never used it again. However, this plugin is an essential tool if you want to create any style of anime sound. Try heavily automating the frequency and LFO parameters on a variety of sound sources to get sounds like this. Reverb. 
Reverb is used to not only make your sounds ring out longer, but can also be used as a texturing tool. Normally, we use reverb as the last effect in your effects chain. But if we place the reverb before a frequency shifter, or really any effect, we can create some more anime-esque styled sound. Delays. Delays are fantastic spatial tools to help create more random textures and rhythms within your sounds. Pitch shifting wind chimes and then running them through a delay unit can help make more of a sparkly metallic wash, which will take to reverb much better. Crystallizer. Crystallizer is a plugin sold by Sound Toys, and this has to be one of the most useful plugins for creating random magical textures. This plugin is basically a pitch shifting and reverse echo unit, which allows you to create granular echoes. Here are a few examples of what you can achieve using Crystallizer. EQ. EQ can be used in a number of ways like shaping the tonal characteristics of a layer, removing low end to help tighten up the mix, and can be used to bring out some frequencies that you like. You can also use EQ in parallel to divide your sound source up into frequency bands so you can process the low, mid, and high sections of your sound differently. Saturation is a perfect tool to help drastically or subtly change the sonic characteristics of your sound. Whether you just want to add some extra warmth to your sound or, you know, kick it in the teeth a bit. Transient shapers and compression. Dynamic processing is super important as you can artificially create or enhance existing transients, reduce harsh transients to create a smoother sound, or just use compression to help glue the finished sound together. Volume and pan automation. Just these two parameters alone can help take an effect like this and turn it into something like this. Try heavily automating these parameters and try not to think about them as a mixing tool and think about them more as a creative effect. You'll get some really cool results with just these basic tools. Doppler. Doppler effects are used to recreate the effect of an object whipping by you. Using this effect, we can throw our sounds away from us, have it fly by us, and even have the sound coming towards us. Now these are just a small handful of the effects I use. There are dozens, if not thousands, of ways to use these plugins to add more color and character to your sounds. Try mixing and combining plugins and really think outside the box when you come up with your own textures. But there is one more section we have to discuss. Synthesis is an extremely powerful tool in a sound designer's arsenal. And as Averith from the Discord community will tell you... Thank you, Aftertouch Audio. My name is Averith Taika. I'm a synthetic sound designer. I formerly worked with Sony Pictures, and I've worked on a few indie films and games. Throughout the rest of this series, you'll see me pop in occasionally to talk about the synthetic aspect of sound design. I've been doing synthesis for about 16 years now. Throughout that time, I've learned a lot about the different kinds of synthesis, from your standard subtractive synthesis through wavetables and into more complicated things like waveguide synthesis, the use of resonators, granulation, things like that. Here you can see the synthesizer that I tend to use for my work. This is a modular synthesizer, mostly consisting of mutable instruments modules, just because they're all very useful and can do a variety of different things. The reason I use this instead of software is because I I've yet to find a software synthesizer that can come even remotely close to doing anything this setup can do. I feel that's mainly because most people build a synthesizer to be commercially viable, which mostly means using it for music. I don't know music at all, so instead I make footsteps and other noises. Okay, enough about me, let's talk about actually synthesizing some sounds. Our first sound will be a buff sound. This is made up of two layers, a noise swash and some sparkles. The noise swash will be created by running pink noise from a Behringer Model D into Polaris and taking the low-pass and inverted bandpass outputs into twist used as a crossfader. Tides will then be our modulator to sweep the filter upwards while crossfading between low-pass and bandpass. The sparkles are made by sequencing rings using a Korg SQ1 to make the high-pitched chimes, then bandpassing it to remove extraneous frequencies and running it into monsoon used as a reverse grain delay with reverb. Our second sound is a sort of charging energy beam. This is a fairly simple patch, also involving pink noise from the Model D into Polaris, used as a bandpass and notch filter, then using tides as the controlling oscillator for a frequency shifter, in this case twist, and then we're using stages as an inverted envelope to modulate the filter and tides as frequency. On top of that, we run a noise burst, in this case made by running pink noise through the Model D's high pass and VCA into a modal resonator, then a frequency shifter modulated by tides, then out into a reverse grain delay to make the plucky stuff. Our third and final sound is this.
This uses a sequenced modal synthesizer into a reverse grain delay on top of plates used as a chord oscillator into rings as a modal filter bank with tides modulating the wave shape of plates into a reverse grain delay. I hope this section has been informative and has showed you that uh, synthesis can be a very effective tool, especially for magic sounds and textures and whatnot. I want to thank Aftertouch Audio once again for giving me a spot here, and hopefully in future videos I will be able to show you more specific ways synthesizers can be used. I also understand that not everyone has a modular synthesizer, which is completely fair, so in future videos I will likely make more use of software synthesizers as well. You can check out all of her links in the description below. She is a wizard with synthesis. Now, I personally use magical textures as a layering element over top of my elemental spells to give them more character. My sound design tends to lean more towards the raw, exaggerated, and organic sounds. But if you're looking to design Final Fantasy style magic effects, then these textures are a must have. Thank you for watching. If you would like to be notified when my next video in the spell design series goes live, consider pressing the subscribe button and ringing the bell. And don't forget to check out the Discord server as well, as we have a lot of cool goodies coming very soon. Now go make some noise.